Welcome back YouTube. This is going to be a quick demo on this PyLogix API uh, script that I wrote a while back. Um, just so you can get data from a PLC through Glow Server. Now, this is very, very simple right now. It's using Flask as the server backend. And um, so if you know Flask, then you'll be able to set up your routes and you know get up get up and running pretty quick but if you don't flask is pretty simple to learn uh, I actually never even used flask before I used this here so that give you an idea uh, anyways I have set up three routes just just as an example of you can, what you can see that it, you know so you know what's possible uh, so it'll get all the tags and if you're familiar with PyLogix, then this will be the get all tags. Uh, set up a route here to get a value of a single tag. And then a get all the devices. And these two examples are how you would run. If you're just testing on your machine, you can do localhost. Uh, and then usually the port is 500, but you can change all these things. Um, let me show you what I have set up right here. I have set up two virtual PLCs with Softlogix 5800. Um, and that's usually what I do to test uh, code or test anything with PyLogix on, at home. Because I don't have a PLC here. Um, so this one is going to be our VM1. You see at the top, Rockwell underscore 1 which Rockwell underscore two is an identical clone, except for the IP uh, that's, that's that we're gonna access through the R Flask server. So as you can see, we have three adapters. You can ignore this one. This is just a NAT adapter. Uh, so I have internet connection to this VM. This is the PLC VM. This is the PLC IP. I'm getting confused with all these different terms. Yeah, this is going to be our identical PLC IP. And you can see it here, 5196. And we can't really ping that from outside. I'll show you right now. So I don't have any access to that PLC from anywhere on this network. but I can ping the 1.8. And I've already have the server running. It's just a pretty basic flag server. Um, and I have my Soplogix uh, virtual machine here, or virtual PLC here. Um, And okay, so I have the identical setup on Rockwell 2 VM. And I'll pop everything open so you can see it. And as you can see, we have a 1.9 for our outside network. And then an identical. PLC IP and you can also see, I'll just see here so these are identical ACD files nothing changed okay and so to create a request you go to your browser or you can use something like postman anything to to check that is used to test APIs uh, in this case, we're just going to use our browser, and here I'm just going to refresh it. And actually, let me make this smaller. And pull. So you'll see here when I refresh this, the server gets a request and it gets the data back. 
Um, but let's try another another tag that I just put in there so so that you can see that it's actually in fact a different PLC. So this is going to be PLC ID one. And let's actually pull up our second one. And you'll see the request here go through on a different PLC. And you can see here that we have our PLC ID number two. If you check out the PLC parameters here, they are identical. So we can in fact connect to multiple identical PLCs uh, doing it this way. Obviously you'll need a subnet uh, that doesn't collide um, with these IPs. And so, yeah, I think that's it for uh, this video. Um, again, this is a very small PyLogix web API that I wrote a while back. I think somebody had asked on our questions on our issues on uh, PyLogix. Uh, somebody had asked a question at one point uh, how to get data through a web server or something like that. And I just kind of wrote this um, just as an example. But here we have three routes, as you can see. And <clears throat> Actually, I was thinking that there might be different ways to do this in a slightly better way because every time you do this request, you are creating a connection to the PLC and then closing it. Uh, obviously, you'll get the data. Uh, but there might be a better way, like if you're doing this multiple times uh, per minute or you know, like you're doing this every five seconds, six seconds, that's going to be a lot, a lot of connections. I don't know if performance wise, uh, this is a smart thing to do, but we could create another, t uh, another route, uh, that you will call in the beginning to create a connection. And then every time you call this, uh, a different route to, to get some data, it will check to see if it's connected and if it's not connected then go ahead and connect but that will, that will minimize the number of connections and closing connections um but yeah if, if more people have interest in this web api you know submit submit pull request or let me know what you think we can do with this uh, i think you have some good potential for the future so thank you for watching